This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a vectorized texture that you could, you could apply to vector objects using Inkscape. And I know I had gone over applying textures in previous tutorials where we used a raster image and simply masked it over the uh, graphic, but in this tutorial is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to show you how to make a vectorized copy of this texture here. And in order to do this, we're going to use GIMP. So if you don't have GIMP, go over to uh, GIMP.org and go ahead and download and install that. It's a free uh, open source uh, you know, raster image manipulation tool, sort of like Illustrator. It's sort of like a free uh, alternative to Illustrator. So once you have that installed, we can go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do in Inkscape is set our view to custom and then zoom in at 100%. We'll open up our line and distribute menu with this button here. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down and then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients and stroke menu with that button there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a text object and I'm going to apply the, uh, the vector texture that we create to that text object. So I'm just going to grab the text tool and come over here and click on the canvas. I'm just going to write on, I'm just going to write down uh, text in all caps and I'll change the font of that to League Gothic. Um, I'll have a link to that in the description if you'd like to download this font and use that as well. So go ahead and click apply and close that out. And I'll come back to the uh, select tool. I'm going to hold control and shift and grab one of these arrows to scale this thing up. Now in order for us to take a texture and put it on top of here or punch a hole through it using path difference, we're going to have to first convert this to a path because right now Inkscape recognizes this as text. If I go to, the, if I go to edit paths by nodes, there are no nodes here for me to edit because it, as far as Inkscape knows, it's just text. If we go to the text tool, there's the cursor blinking right there because it's recognizing it as text. So to convert this to a path, let's go back to the select tool. We'll go to path, object to path. And now if we go to our edit paths by nodes tool and click on each letter, it's now being recognized as a path or a, a vector object. And what I'll do now is let me go back to the select tool and with this whole thing selected, I'm just going to ungroup it so it's individual individual letters. And then I'm, then I'm going to unify it all together by going to Path, Union. And then I'll hold Control and Shift and scale this down a little bit. And now it's time to create uh, our texture. So I'm going to do that in GIMP. So I'm going to open up GIMP here. And if, if my screen looks a little different than yours, it's because I have the windows set to single window mode. I know uh, by default GIMP uses three different panels, but I like it better when it's one entire unit like that. So if you'd like it set up like my screen, just go to Windows, Single Window Mode. And once we're there, let's go to File, New. And from this drop down, let's choose um, 1600 by 1200. Go ahead and click on that. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And there's our new document. So. What we're going to do to create this texture is we're just going to grab the brush over here. Let's grab the paintbrush. And the brush we're going to use is this one down here. We're going to click on that. And the name of it is called um, Cell 02. So I guess this is supposed to be like a cell. But um, from what I've seen, it, it does pretty well in making like a, like a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and use that tool. I'm going to come over here to the size and I'm going to change that to about 150. Somewhere in the 150 range, 158. Uh, 153, that should be good. And aspect ratio, angle, have those set to how it is. And then we should be good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click and I'm just going to click and drag and draw over this white canvas right here. Just like that. I'm just going to go ahead and draw. You don't want to color it all in. You want to leave some white areas in there. You want it to look inconsistent like it is here because that's the whole point of the texture to give it like a distressed natural kind of look. So I'm just going to go ahead and color this in a little bit. You want to leave a fair amount of white space in between these black areas. So make sure not to color it in too much. I'll just color this in a little more. And maybe I'll do something like that. Once you get your screen looking something like this, what you could do is go to colors and invert. Invert the colors and then we'll have this messy looking thing right here. And then we'll go to edit and copy. We're going to copy that. And then we'll go back to Inkscape. And once we're on Inkscape, we can just right click on the canvas and go to paste. And it should paste that image in there. Now this is pretty big. So I'm going to zoom out by uh, pressing the minus key on the keyboard. 
a few times to zoom out. And there's that image. We're going to use this image, this raster image, as a, as a, uh, a reference point for creating our texture. So what, with this selected, with the Select tool, we'll have this to selected, and we'll go to Path and Trace Bitmap. And we're going to choose down here, we're going to go to Color Quantization, if I pronounced that right. We're going to click on that, and where it says Colors, bring that all the way down to 2. And then press Update right here to get a preview. And it should show you a little preview in the window here. Obviously, um, there's nothing in this window, so it didn't it didn't grab any of the information from this image. So I'm gonna if if this happens to you, just go ahead and try three. So I'm gonna bump the colors up to three, hit update, and see what happens. All right, that's more of what I'm looking for. Only it's inverted. We want the um, the white space to be where the black space is, and the black space to be the white where the white space is. So what I'll do here is click invert image. I'll click this checkbox, invert image and then press update and it'll show you that's what we're looking for right there that's something we could use as a texture so once you get that just go ahead and click OK and this may take a few seconds it's gonna take me a few seconds because I'm recording this while doing it so uh, it uses a little more uh, computer power and once it's done we can close out of this um, this should be this image that it traced over it there's a vector copy of that image that it traced over it in vectors and I'll, I'll show you here you could this, this behaves the same way any vector object would in Inkscape if you turn this red okay this is much slower than usual but um let me zoom in and show you I'm gonna hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in uh, if I go to edit paths by nodes and I'm a little hesitant to do this but um let me see what happens edit paths by nodes it'll show you all those nodes in there meaning this is this is a vector graphic that we can use as a texture so um okay my screen's graying out i'll go back to the select tool sorry about this it's usually um it's usually not even nearly this slow it's because i'm recording this while doing it that it's doing this so if i would have known that beforehand i wouldn't have uh i wouldn't have done this here I guess just let it finish doing its thing. Okay, so now we're back to where we want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to hold control, roll down on the mouse wheel. And with that texture object selected, I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and click on our text object so we have them both selected. And we'll center that on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything now what I'm gonna do now is since the background of this image is white I'm gonna turn this texture white just to get an idea of how it'll look once it's applied uh, to the text object so I'm gonna turn that white and as you can see there it, it created like this little uh, we have a texture there and what I'm gonna do now is with this texture selected I'm going to hold control and shift. Okay, well, maybe not yet. Okay, now I will. I'll hold control and shift and then click on it again above where the text object is. So it selects both of them once it's good and ready to, I guess. Click on that. Hold control and sh uh, sh uh, shift and alt. I'm sorry. Hold shift and alt and then click on it. So it selects both of them. Or, you know, for another way you could do it is just click and drag over the whole thing. Then we'll go to Path and Difference. And let me zoom back in. This should behave a little better now. I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back in. And here you see we got our text object with a little texture applied. And we could scale this up, scale it down. And this is the, uh, this is the benefit with using a vector object to create a texture because it's an actual vector object. I mean, if you're creating a logo, you're going to want to use something like a vector. You're not going to want to use raster images. I mean, raster images sometimes look nicer when you mask them on top of the object. But for, for doing any kind of logo type of work, you should really use vectors. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. And if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.